To be fair, it wasn't a difficult decision. So uh, we, we spoke to a number of betting brands and uh, BetSafe just, just shared similar values with us. They're an ambitious business. We're an ambitious club. And uh, you know that is as good a start point as any in a relationship. And all the way through discussions, BetSafe have been excited about the opportunity of a partnership. And that's been echoed on our side too. So uh, we can't wait to kick things off and uh, look forward to, to working with you guys for the next few years. The US uh, rugby market is booming like nowhere else in the world and, and we believe uh, across rugby in the UK that it's a, a terrific emerging market. Um, other sports in the USA are not achieving the, the same levels of participation as rugby is. Um, so we have a club out in the States in Saracen, Seattle on the West Coast, um, which is one of the strongest uh, performing clubs in, in US rugby. Um, and uh, it's just a natural extension really. Uh, when we're done playing our routine games in the UK and then playing our big games like we do at Wembley Stadium or the London Stadium, uh, the next uh, natural uh, obvious progression is to look at emerging markets and see where we can take the Saracens brand um, and uh, you know, the USA is that, that next natural step. Yeah, so we're excited about the opportunity of uh, playing at the uh, what was the Olympic Stadium, now the London Stadium and uh, it was quite logical really. Um, two premiership rugby clubs on the west side of London, Saracens in North London, but actually the east side of London is a hotbed of rugby and uh, Essex, Kent um, produce uh, amazing rugby uh, through the lower leagues and uh, so for us to be able to take a, a big game, a showcase game over to that stadium um, and to again extend our brand into those counties um, it's 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 going to be terrific. It's going to create a real opportunity for us, and uh, you know those 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 folks who love their rugby and live in those counties have a long way to travel to get to Twickenham or Wembley. So we're kind of taking uh, taking the game to them, and um, we think everyone's going to be a winner as a result of it. As always, we aim to sell it out. So uh, uh, anything less than a sellout, we don't consider to be a, a good day in the office. So yeah, we want to sell the stadium out and. Um, It'll be um, the first game of club rugby to be held in the, uh, in the London Stadium. We're overly invested in, in youth and uh, it's something we're incredibly proud of. So you look at the, the, the current crop of players uh, in our team and how many of those have come through our development pathways. Um, we, we, just, we just believe it's the way to develop players. Uh, so we'll always supplement uh, our squad with picking one or two key individuals per year from outside of our development channels but um, we're hugely committed to it and uh, you know the next thing on the radar for us is to own our own high performance center and to develop that and we think that is again going to move the needle on developing talent internally yeah so we've been here eight years and the game has moved on enormously in eight years and this has been a fantastic home for us old Albanians uh, but we have to have our own facility and uh, you know I think it's actually quite commendable what our coaches and uh, uh, all of our staff have delivered in the way of professional rugby players over the last eight, ten years. And we want to continue that but drive it to another level and owning our own facility and being able to have more space to work within and what have you, we can just see that delivering disproportional results, which is exciting. So somebody asked me recently, they said, um, oh, you've, you've uh, signed another relatively elderly player and uh, no names mentioned. But I said, you know, never will a championship winning team be made out of just fit young men. Uh, there's a third element to it, and that's wisdom and experience. And that's what you get with the guys who are perhaps in the last two or three years of their of their rugby career. Um, and no one should apologize for that. It's essential to have those old firm heads, maybe a few gray hairs when the going gets tough. And those are the guys that keep people together um, and uh, keep, keep their, you know, keep your wits about you when when the, when the, the chips are down. Um, so um, we are uh, committed to developing youth internally, but at the same time, we never never apologise for carefully selecting people who can come into the club towards the end of their career, provide wisdom, provide experience, level-headedness, help to continue to embed our culture. Um, and uh, yeah, so old, old players are, uh, are absolutely key to the uh, key to the Saracen success story. Um, and typically, you find some of those bigger names when they come in as well. What I like to see is the fact that they stick around uh, Saracens for years after they've gone, and that means we're obviously getting something right. So Francois Pinar and uh, Brendan Fenter 
and Thomas Castagnier, guys who are still in touch with Saracens on a weekly and a monthly basis. They're, they are their involvement through our board and what have you uh, is uh, is continual. And um, you know, once a Saracen, always a Saracen, which is which is a wonderful thing. I mean, the fans have they've developed such a great voice over the last couple of seasons. We're now uh, only a couple of hundred seats light of a full capacity for every single game last season. So, you know, again, we will be ambitious this year and aim to sell out every single game. What we want for our players is for them to play in front of a full house. Um, so the fans have done their bit. They've grown a voice. They've supported us uh, and, and grown our capacity to nearly being full. Now on the club side of the equation, it's our job to develop the facilities further. And when you read about sport and sports facilities, it's all about fan engagement. And we're in a in a stadium that is, um, you know, a four part process to developing. We built the East Stand five years ago, and it's delivered three thousand or three and a half thousand very big, comfortable seats and some wonderful hospitality behind it, and good amenities for the fans. Um, the next phase of our evolution is to develop the West Stand. Um, so we will be starting that later this year, opening it in January 2019, and that again something we're really excited about, uh, taking us to the next level.